from Thought Crime, baby. Welcome to Thought Crimes, everybody. Of course, this is your man, Prince Solomon P. Solo in the building. Going to be chopping it up here with a master himself, Mr. Carl Jones. Now, if you're not familiar with Carl Jones, and I know some people may, and I don't know how can you not be familiar with him, but Carl Jones is a cartoonist, illustrator, animator, actor, voice actor, and producer. And just some of Carl's production uh, credits includes animation, working with the uh, Aaron Magruder comic strip led series, uh, which ran from February 8th, 1996 to March 26, 2008. Also working on the Boondocks animated series as a voice actor, Thugnificent, everyone, and also executive producer and animator of the series itself. The Boondock series was one of the first animated series to earn a Peabody Award. Carl has also produced and wrote for the series Freaknik, the musical, which starred T-Pain, Joey Galaxy, Rick Ross. Carl Jones has also served as producer, writer, and creative consultant and lent his voice to series such as Black Dynamite, the animated series. And he is now producer, writer, and voice actor on the Comedy Central animated series Legends of Chamberlain Heights. So we got a heavyweight in the game right now, Mr. Carl Jones. Of course, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Oh, thank you, man. It's, it's a pleasure to uh, have somebody want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no doubt, man. Um, I think it's just important that, you know, people like you, such as yourself, I mean, at least if you're going to have a conversation, at least you be talking to people that, you know, are admiring your work. Because there's a lot of people, I don't know if you know it, but word on the street is that a lot of people that like, I've come in contact with, that I've grown with, they know who you are. They be like, oh, we know about Aaron Magruder, and we know about, like, let's say somebody like a Bruce W. Smith who did, you know, Baby's Kids and Proud Family, but also Carl Jones because you, you kind of got like a, a unique hybrid approach, right? Because you do the animation and your art is top notch quality. It's like, I feel like you're spearheading like this, there's this, there's this wave that's came in, this revolutionary wave. But also on the flip side, you're a funny dude because I re now for real because you I remember you doing the two stake versus metaphor and yeah. that was classic but you know like what where were you able to pull that type of humor from like that that raw humor that you know we would only see with the likes of like let's say in Living Color or you know Dave Chappelle or even early work by Robert Townsend like what were some of your influences? Well. Um I mean, it's, there's so many influences, man. Um, but I would say, like, the most major influence when I was young w would have to be Eddie Murphy. You know, um, I mean, since I was, like, I don't know how old I was. But the first Eddie Murphy album that I had was actually a cassette tape. And I remember I used to put it in the old, you remember the old tape recorders? <laughs> that would, like, where you, where you could set it to where, like, it, it would play and then flip over and play the other side and just keep going. <laughs> yeah. So I used to, like, go to sleep, like, listening to Eddie Murphy tapes. And and just like you know, wake up in the morning and go to school and just say some crazy, you know, being not being in school, just saying some crazy shit. Oh man! Um, but um, but I but I, I started out just kind of mimicking other comics and and um and I started like you know really studying like Eddie Murphy's timing and how he told jokes and how he would go into characters after he set up the joke and um and then that actually led me to look into Richard Pryor. You know, so I, I actually went from Eddie Murphy back to like Richard Pryor and then back to Red Fox. Mm -hmm. And then and then I went back to like Dolomite and started learning a little bit more about the different people that even inspired Eddie. You know what I'm saying? So then I from, from that point, I just kind of became a student, man. You know, I just like really, really love that stuff. And, you know, um, I mean, but, you know, there's, then you got Dick Gregory, you mm -hmm. got um, Paul Mooney, mm. you know, you know, you got um, Robin Harris. You, I mean, you know, um, I mean, it's so many, man. There's so many, so many great talented, um, you know, black comics and comedians that inspired me. Man, I, you can tell because it's anywhere. The reason why I point that out first is because, you know, I saw your production credits. And, you know, as I told you, all very as a personal fan, I was, you know, very meticulous about reading, you know, the boondocks, you know, which, of course, with Aaron Magruder. Uh, I even remember they had this little flash animation of when the the comic strip itself launched right and it, you know it was like you know it was just it was leading up to this thing but i remember the style of the art was changing a little bit right you know and i was like yo mm -hmm. you know aaron mcgrew like i thought he was a dope artist but then it started to have this this more anime form and, and highly detailed and i'm 
you know, I'm telling my homeboys, I'm like, yo, yo, what's up? Is this, is this nigga improving over time? Like, and he was like, what you talking about? I, said, <laughs> I was like, it's like the art is different and it's like, it's just cleaner. And then when I looked into the lower right hand corner, it said Carl Jones. I was like, okay. So then that's when I started doing research. And what I found out was that beyond that, of course, you know, with the humor and the things you were doing, like when I saw the little YouTube shorts and everything, I thought it was funny. Your humor, it shows up, let's say, on the series right now with the show called Legends. Could you explain to the people the premises of the show of Legends of uh, Chamberlain Heights? Well, uh, Legends of Chamberlain Heights is um, uh, created by these two basketball players from um, UCLA, um, Josiah and Quinn. Uh, they, they actually like sat the bench like their whole uh, <laughs> their whole basketball when they was on the basketball team at UCLA they just sat the bench the whole time and, and, they, and they thought that this would be like a really cool idea for a show about like a group of friends that not only sit the bench on their basketball team but they sit the bench in life you know what I'm saying but, but in their heads they're legends and, and so I think a lot of people can relate to that to where like you know you always feel like you kind of get the short end of the stick or you never really completely you know reach your fullest potential as as you know i mean in society but in, in your mind you can always you know what i'm saying think you are the shit <laughs> you know so that was that was that was kind of like the basic premise for it and um and so you know when the show got uh picked up by comedy central you know they talked to me about coming on as a exact a co well co-executive producer and and actually running the writer's room so um they happened to be like you know fans of boondocks and black dynamite and tube steak and all that stuff so it was just a really really good combination you know what i mean i always crack up when uh, you're doing the voiceover for like coach bundy and <laughs> <laughs> yo he's so over the top and i'm like man it's crazy because i know people like this right and i could tell uh to the degree of the level of influence that you know you have been a part of as far as the game goes you know you know it's funny but you yeah. know it's funny about what's that? up what was what's funny is I, I never was actually supposed to play Coach Bundy. Mm -hmm. What what happened was actually I wasn't supposed to play any of the characters on Legends. But what I but what used to happen is we used to have table reads for the network, right? Whenever we finished the script, we would do a table read for the network. Mm -hmm. And so all of the all of the writers would basically play different characters in the, you know, in the script. So I just would like I just played Coach Bundy because we didn't have, you know, there was no one else to play him. And what I was actually doing was I was actually doing Dave Chappelle doing Samuel Jackson. <laughs> and so like, it, that's what I was doing in my head. And right. so when I when I did the character, right, everybody just started laughing and then Comedy Central really loved it. And then they just, you know, so they, they said, yo, you need, you have to play Coach Bundy. <laughs> and then, um, and, and it, it was the same way with Mumble Mouth. There was a character named Mumble Mouth. And then it was, I think I did, I did like a couple more voices, but they all started out just me doing table reads. I wasn't, <laughs> never really, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I wasn't casted to play those guys. Man. But yeah. That is true because it is funny, right? And Mumble Mouth, because I was like, I, yo, that's Carl right there. Because I heard it. Like, <laughs> I, like, I knew it. I recognized your voice. I said, hey, yo, that's him. That's him. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah. side note, this is what I'm talking about, Carl, right? Uh -huh. All right. When I was talking about the, the influence and, and like it's a renaissance approach about you right because you are just as heavy in the voice acting game like i mean did you ever see yourself at this point where you know you did thugnificent i uh, was you, you did bus boy from the boondocks and you did of course what you're doing here with legends and then your other voiceover acting gigs as well did you ever see yourself as being this active in the voiceover side of the game man i, I never did um I, I mean i used to always like imitate my friends and stuff like you know when i was young or i would like you know just like create my own characters and stuff but just for fun I, but i never really thought it would actually like you know be a career or anything like that i, I definitely didn't see that coming e even with boondocks yeah I, I i you know i was not it, it happened kind of the same way accidentally because when we created this character thugnificent originally that was supposed to be ludicrous so <laughs> but but so so what happened was okay we this is a weird story we had so we had this deal with ludicrous <laughs> so he said he would do the show and he would play Thugnificent if I drew his album cover, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, so I was like, cool. So you know, I started working on some ideas for the album cover, and then every time I tried to get in touch with him, I just could never reach him because I was trying to get some feedback, right? Mm -hmm. So time passed, time passed, time passed. Finally, I did get him on the phone, <laughs> but I had to block my number to get him. So I got him on the phone, <laughs> and he was like, um, he was like, yo, who this? And I was like, yo, this is Carl from the Boondocks, and he was like, um. He was like, well, yo, you know, normally I don't answer the phone if I don't see a number I recognize. 
And I'm like, but you did this time. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> but he was like, um, he said, yeah, but what you want? And I said, well, I'm trying to do this cover or whatever. And he was like, well, I ain't got time right now. So he got off the phone, and so the cover never got done. Mm. So, so what happened? So, so what happened was when it was time when it was time for him to record, he was like, "I'm not gonna do the part because y'all never did my album." Cover. I'm like, "Nigga, <laughs> nigga, we've been trying to get in touch with you for four months." <laughs> you know. Um, so, so anyways, he backed out like at the last second, mm -hmm. and so what what happened is I, I tipped the voice in the animatics just so that the animators could have something to work with mm -hmm. and and because Aaron really liked it and thought it worked I just ended up doing it because <laughs> we, did, we didn't have you know we didn't have any time that's what I'm talking about let the Negro energy line up man that's what's up I like that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's some funny ass shit man and I bet you know the beginning of Thug Niffins, and I, you know, of course, they had a chance to listen. Now, now people know, you know, because I did not know that story. I thought you just, for the most part, got in there, they liked it, and I was like, oh, okay, it's a funny ass character, you know, especially uh, when he had his, uh, what was it, he had his disc records against Grandpa, yeah. Stump him in the Nuts, and F Granddad. <laughs> Yo, man, I'm telling you, like, the way you was able to deliver the comedy, it was, it was pure gold. And it's like, because oh, people, you. yeah, because people are looking at you, uh, whether you know it or not, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, like I said, we, we, we amongst the regular folks, and, like, I, I hear when, like, people leave us messages and things like that, and, you know, they're influenced by, like, say, Carl Jones, and they're like, yo, I'll, I'll animate make my own stuff or even if on the comedy side right uh because i know you did a lot of writing you do a lot of comedy writing as well that's why i say you like a renaissance yeah. dude you do comedy writing because you worked on uh in the flow with Afion crockett of course you you was contributing writer to boondocks and uh, yeah. what we saw with ready rumble and freak nick as well and then black dynamite i mean carl like when you yeah. was growing up was this all the plan was just like yo when i when i get to this point i'm gonna be an everybody nigga like was was that the point Man. where you got here <laughs> I mean, I didn't even have a plan, man. I, like, I dropped out of high. Well, let me. I, or let me correct that. <laughs> I was kicked. I, I was kicked out of high school. <laughs> okay. I was kicked. I, I was kicked out of high school, and um, and then I was. I, I had to go to like this this school for bad kids, mm -hmm. like in order to try to you know still get my diploma. And then I got kicked out of that school. So I was like, I, I, and I wasn't even like a bad kid. I just, you know, I just wasn't. I just didn't know how to follow rules, and I was, you know, just trying to be a class clown and right. But anyway, so I, I really didn't have a plan at all, man. I didn't know how any of this would come together. Mm -hmm. um, but but at a certain point, you know, after trying to do everything, like I had every kind of job you could think of. I was a janitor to like a, I, I so I used to sell. Pe Listen, I worked for a pizza place that sold pizzas door. Listen, they sold pizzas door to door to people that didn't order them. <laughs> like 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 that's that's the worst job. And can you imagine? I mean, how do you <laughs> you go? You you're trying to convince somebody in the pizza? In, in, by then, it's not even hot. Like it was like it was crazy. But I was like, I, I had every kind of job you could think of. I hustled and sold every possible thing you could think of. And and I got to a point, man, where I just felt like I needed to make a change mm -hmm. you know so I, I literally packed up everything i was in north carolina i packed up everything and moved out to la and just took a chance you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and um things just kind of fell in place from there you know yo that's a beautiful story that's a beautiful story um that's a that's a kanye west story that's a get rich or die try story. <laughs> i got i got shot nine times i came back I almost did this shit. It's funny you brought that up because yeah. that was one of the things that that was actually one of the things that made me move because I did get shot at and uh, and I was just like, all right, well, I can't, I can't do this no more. I got to, <laughs> I gotta find some, yeah. you know, I gotta find something else that's not as yeah. You know how they things. are. Uh, Cause see, I, I grew up in Atlanta, man, and it, you know I kind of yeah. had some similar experiences. But you know how they are. They was like, "Oh, nigga, we miss yo. Turn this car back around." Like, "Oh shit!" Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to be back when that car comes back. You know what I'm saying? But that's right. a great story, man. Because that's why you know I wanted to speak with you directly over the air. Because you know people need to hear these stories. They need to hear your story. They know your name, Carl Jones. But a lot of people, they like, yo, we see him. Yo, we see him all the time. You know what I'm saying? But it's wow. like it's different when they get to hear your story. The fact that you said, for instance, I left because nothing was working out for me. I was working these jobs. It was dead end. Uh, which there are a lot of people yeah. that are listening. They running through those situations. Then you got guys. He's like, oh shit, he a real nigga. He got shot at. You know what I'm saying? So they probably like, yeah. <laughs> they like, yo, what's up? So. The fact that you was able to correct that course in your life, you know, yeah. 
at the end, it looks like the the rewards were, you know, worth the risk. Like, you know, because at that point, I guess after getting shot at, you know, for you personally, you like, I'm not scared of anything at this point. Not scared of fear, failure. You just shot on and did what you needed to do, which I think is uh, it's it's dope. You know what I'm saying? I read somewhere, Carl. I read that mm -hmm. originally you was in lines to set up some with Beanie Siegel and State Property for an animation called Playpen. And word is, is that it was supposed to be Oz meets Rugrats. Is that true? Yeah, man. That, that was that was my first job, really. That, I was Yeah, I was developing um, yeah, the cartoon series for Beanie Siegel and, and, and State Property, but it was through uh, Rockefeller Films. And this was at the time, this was right before like Jay and Dame split. You know what I'm saying? This was like right when it was kind of like you felt the tension in the air, but they were still trying to work it out. <laughs> and um, I, I was I was in New York at the time and we and we were putting everything together and we got really close to setting something up with Spike TV and um, and uh, Beanie Siegel got arrested for attempted murder. Mm -hmm. So that 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 kind of uh, killed the cartoon. Uh, no puns intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, so uh, so, yeah. So when that happened, man, that that was like. You know that ended it and then you know jay and dame had their whole thing and the, everything just kind of went away um but uh but yeah it was it was basically like it was like the rock of i mean it was basically like the state property crew mm -hmm. as ba as babies and they were in this daycare center that was like a correctional facility you know what i'm saying so instead of like nap time they had time out i mean um um they had lights out and you know what i'm saying and they you know they were selling contraband in the, in the, you know, in the nursery and stuff um you know so it, it was it was a cool idea man i, I think it would have been pretty dope <laughs> okay yeah that that sounds like um i i think i saw some preliminary sketches because like i said you know being a big follower of your work earlier uh but i remember seeing and hearing things about that and then like you know before you know we start chopping up i was like oh shit whatever did happen to play pen you know so you know yeah. i was just you know wondering about that but one thing that i do notice in your your style of comedy your art is that you create characters that you're not trying to appeal to everyone which i love it's like it's you know it's unapologetic which the people love as well whether it's you know what was taking place on the boondocks or what was taking place with black dynamite also what we have here with legends and even freaknik um yeah. how do you feel at this time you know i call it the wet wipe culture you know because on, on dark crimes uh, we call it the wet wipe culture it's like like you saw where kind of like let's say somebody like dave Chappelle, he's kind of getting like you know ooh and booze you know if he says certain jokes now um with yeah. the style of comedy and art that you have and with your crew uh, what do you think about the sensitivity of, of certain comedy now um well i mean i think i mean you know the, i mean the sensitivity it's not it's not fun to have to work around you know when you when you're producing like tv because obviously that has an effect on you know what the network will let you get away with because the advertisers are weighing in on it and mm -hmm. you know they're not going to want to sell their products if you're not if you're saying something that they feel is offensive to certain groups of people or whatever so we we do feel a little bit of it um i i gotta say though you know for the most part having had shows on Adult Swim for for so long, and I'm actually developing a new show for Adult Swim right now called Laser Wolf. Um, not not developing, we're actually in production. But um, and 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 having you know, I mean, working with Adult Swim has always been like, I mean, we've had a lot of freedom. I mean, mm -hmm. like like we 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 do stuff on Adult Swim that I know there's there's no other network that would let us get away with half of the stuff that we do. You know, they're really really good about supporting. The artist's vision and allowing you to really completely be honest and put everything out there i mean they do have you know they pull us back from time to time but um i i don't really deal with a whole lot of it now my thought about it in general is that you know i mean it's 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 kind of sad that that every you know there's there's so much sensitivity to <laughs> to being honest and telling the truth you know like it, it's one thing to be offended by what you hear it's another thing to attack the person that's that's saying it because in my opinion if it wasn't true it wouldn't affected you anyway mm -hmm. and 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 i think people should be able to express themselves how they want even when it comes to racism to be honest like if if i'm living next door to the grand dragon of the ku klux klan i'd like to know that <laughs> I, 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 I you know what i'm saying like yeah. he should be able to express how he feels about <laughs> black people and i should be able to express how i feel about him you know or, or else you wouldn't know who anybody is we, i mean 
at a certain point, like we're gonna have all of this stuff is gonna is gonna hit the fan anyway. Mm -hmm. So we might as well let people be who they are and say what they really think and feel. And at least it puts it out on the table so it can be talked about mm -hmm. or it can be fought over or whatever happens. But it, 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 at any rate, I mean, it's 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 getting out there and it's a real issue that I think we have to deal with and we have to look at in its face or else it's never going to go away. It's never going to heal. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt about that because I'll be honest with you, man. It's like it's something I wrestle with sometimes. Sometimes, you know, with my lady, we, we kind of wrestle with because we get everything immediate right so if we say something it's like boom we get like 300 comments and people yo why did y'all say that man why did you call her a mayor white woman it's like you know ah, you know <laughs> yeah you know so as people get you know they get real tight about that and i think i think right now it's i think to some degree it's, it's kind of stifling the growth of let's say entertainment specifically in a space of of comedy you know and um, yeah. You guys, you know, and especially, you know, dealing with what you was able to create on your own, Carl Jones, uh, you ran into something that was an uh, interesting dynamic. I, I call it like it's like the the C. Dolores Tucker and Tupac effect. Right. And mm -hmm. I remember there was a time where, you know, you guys had people like Al Sharpton, you know, marching or talking about they wanted, you know, let's say some of your work removed, you know, i.e. the boondocks. Uh, what do you think about that at the time? And how have, for the most part, you feel like, for instance, the black audience being receptive to your style of comedy overall? Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you a good story here on this Al Sharpton thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so we're in production on, se on season one for boondocks, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, I think we, we, we're close to launching, you know, uh, so the word is getting out. Everybody's heard about it. And Al Sharpton sends one of his people, I'm not going to say his name, but he sent one of his people to the boondocks offices, right? So Aaron and I, we sat down with this guy. We didn't know what it, what it was about, but he said, uh, he said, look, you know, we know you guys are going to be using the N word. And Aaron was like, we don't use the word N word. We use the word nigga. And he said, okay, well, we know that you're going to be, <laughs> we know you're going to be, we know you're going to be using the word nigga in the show. And um, you know we're going to have to come out against you. Because Al is not going, you know, he's not going to let you just, you know, put a show out on the air where you call him black people the N-word. And um, Aaron was like, okay, so you, you came all the way down here to tell us this. And he was like, well, see, there may be a way that this can work out for all of us. And, and, they, and so the guy was like, Al is trying to get his TV show popping. And we want to create some controversy around this so that it can work for both of our benefit and aaron was like yo we don't first of all we're not going to need to we're not going to need fake controversy because we're all going to have enough real controversy with the show mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying and then and then i just like completely lost respect for them because like if they if they really passionately had an issue with us using the word nigga like i would respect that so much more you're trying to use it yeah. you know what i'm saying use it to get to get viewers or whatever like so i, I yo so anyways the guy was like all right well he said, so, you know, we're going to have to come out against you. We're going to have to, you know, it's going to go down. And we were like, all right. <laughs> you know, like, we, it was like, see you in the street kind of thing, right? <laughs> what? So, 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 so then what happened was, here's where it gets really crazy. So what happened was, Al Sharpton's people, they put, this, they put this march together downtown in L.A., right? I mean, this protest. Yeah. At the same time, the Nation of Islam had a, had a different protest about some other shit in the same location. <laughs> these, these niggas started beefing with each other. <laughs> over the place where they was going to protest their cause. And, and, it, and, it, and it broke out into an actual fight. So we turned around and put it in the show. <laughs> with, Rev, with, Rev, with Reverend Goodlove. But um, but yeah, that's that's what happened with that. What? So that was the inspiration for the whole Reverend Goodlove incident? Yes. Man, get out of here. That's yep. crazy. Man, so... So not only does Al Sharpton look like a retired pimp slash gangster, he moves like one behind the scenes. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Man. I don't even know if I ever told anybody that. I don't even know that you might be the first person that had that story. <laughs> Yo, well, hey, man, I definitely appreciate that. But that that is some funny stuff right there because I, I remember the controversy and I was like, yo, is he... Yo, is he serious? Like, I mean, of all the other things that are going on in the world, but I guess that is true because, you know, he was like you know made it you know about the n-word or the word nigga right but then on the flip right. side he's like but let me tell you how this works though if you give me a little bit off the top <laughs> yeah yeah i even think i even think the guy the guy that came to see us when he left he was like all right nigga we're gonna have to see you then <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, man, whatever. Hey, you know, and, and that's something, you know, those are funny stories. And I can see why, you know, you pull from real life experience because, you know, from what I've read, you know, like I said, I used to, you know, read a lot of articles and different things about you. And a lot of times, yeah. you know, you said, no, a lot of this shit happens in real life. I'm not pulling, I'm not making this up. <laughs> nah, look, I tell you, I, I, give, I give you one more. I give you one more. This, <laughs> this one. So, you know, the Usher episode, right? Yeah. Okay. So that actually happened to me with my ex-wife now but it actually happened mm -hmm. like to me we, we went out to eat with Aaron Magruder and, and his girl and it was a couple other people from the show we went out to Mr. Chow's in LA right and we you know we're eating everything is cool or whatever I think we were celebrating the show getting picked up for another season yeah and um and Usher walks in right and and as soon as he walks in like my wife just like completely she, I mean, I think she, her head's been around 360 degrees <laughs> to like, you know, to see this dude, right? So he's like sitting across from us, and the whole time we're there, she's like looking over in his direction, like making, like waving, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, you know, <laughs> like just kind of <laughs> trying to get his attention. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm just trying to play it off. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm trying to play it off. Aaron notices. Everybody notices it, but I'm trying to act like it's not happening. So the moment that we get ready to leave. We get up from the table and we get close to the door. I look back. She's over there talking to us. <laughs> so we all. So, so look, she she waves a hand like, come on, come over here, guys. Come meet Usher. So we all walk back over there. Right. And she's introducing everybody. And she's like, so, so Usher, this is Aaron Magruder. And she looks at me and she says, this is my this is Carl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's like, yo. Was, yo, yo, the, the the ride home was a long ride home. It's a long ride home. Wow. So anyway, so the next day we went to the office and Aaron was like, "Yo, you know that's going in the show, right?" <laughs> so, that's why I actually played the waiter in that scene where she like when um, you know, when Tom was singing to her and everything. Yeah, man, that's that's yeah. that's some classic. That's what I'm talking about. That's some classic shit. That's what makes the the comedy. And the art that you deliver, and of course with the Boondocks and with the likes of uh, Aaron Magruder as well, what y'all brought was just it was gold, man. And yo, know, people, you know, of course people are still twisted about it, and we know for a fact you have been able to move on to other things as well. But uh -huh. could you just do me a favor here and just explain to <laughs> some degree that you know I've read, but uh -huh. could you explain to some degree, not in full detail? Of what yeah. happened with the boondocks. Because, you know, we got a lot of guys online. They were like, yeah, man, you know, the cracker then came down on the boondocks. And they, they yeah. set their brother Aaron on ice. You know, so what what yeah, really yeah. happened towards the end? All right, let me, um, I got, let me, let me answer this. I got to, <laughs> I got to be careful how I answer this. That's man. cool. I, I, I just say, I say, um, I mean, look, man, we, <laughs> so, I, okay, I left. I left after the third season, right? Mm -hmm. And um, part of the reason why I left is because I was developing a few other things, like towards the tail end of that season. Um, I wasn't going to leave. I was just developing other stuff. But Aaron wasn't really too cool about the fact that I was developing other things, like Black Dynamite, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so he and I had a big, we had a big fallout over that, mm. um, to the point where he didn't want me on the show anymore because you know it was kind of like. It was a real, I don't even want to say family type of, it was almost like a life, it was like, it was like a gang, really, like, you either you belong to, you know, you, you rocking with boondocks, or you don't, you don't rock with nothing else yeah. at the same time, like, and, and I didn't, I didn't quite understand that, so, you know, that's where we had, like, a, a, a big misunderstanding, right, and then, from there, it was, you know, I mean, I went on to do Black Dynamite, and mm -hmm. he was trying to get another season going for season four, and you know, it took forever, mm -hmm. and, um, um, I, I remember at one point, I, 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 we tried to s work something out. Like, I was willing to, like, come back to the show, and we were going to try to work things out. And um, he still, he was, you know, he didn't want it, he didn't want it to happen. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, so he, he, he turned, he reject, he turned down my help, and then he decided to try to do it on his own anyway. And um, from there, I think, uh, I think it was just really tough for him to get through it, like, on his own. And, and. You know, at this at a certain point, like you can only stretch the schedule and the budget so much before the network is going to say, mm -hmm. I mean, not the network, but Sony mm -hmm. is going to is going to you know cut the cut the bleeding off and and yeah. um so to to my knowledge because I wasn't actually there during the fourth season, but to my knowledge, um the the show was falling way behind production 
and eventually they had to you know cut their losses because they couldn't i think they did like a a 15 or 20 episode order or something like that and mm -hmm. they and i think they just i think they delivered 10 i believe mm -hmm. um but uh i'm not 100 percent sure but yeah i believe that's that's kind of what happened with season four and then you know a lot of people ask me well like what happened with season four like it wasn't the same show it wasn't the same you know and and i think I, honestly like we together we had like a really great combination like between like rodney barnes and 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 aaron and and you know some of the other writers on the show like there was a good balance of everything like 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 um we, we always say like i was more like riley and aaron was more like huey and rodney barnes was more like uncle ruckus mm -hmm. and and so so it brought like a bunch of different really cool things to the table that made for what the show was you know um and that's that's kind of how it went down uh, you know I, I mean that's the that's the <laughs> that's the safe <laughs> oh, that's the same version of the story. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's no problem, man. Hey, I'm not trying to get you uh, to do no expose or anything like that, but the people is just, you know, the people are always curious, and I see cats, they always on YouTube making their own, like, X-Files theories, and, uh, you know, I was like, well, let me just ask directly, you know, let's ask the source, but, uh, so yeah. basically, it was what we're seeing right now with the Cavs is what played out. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah man. It's kind, of, kind of, I mean, kind of, kind of. I mean, you know, we, I, I, but I just see it more like Voltron. Like we all just kind of came together to form this thing, and then yeah. with when one with one element gone or two elements gone, it's it's not the same thing, you no. know. And and it's a lot harder for him to, because you know, when I was there, man, I. I I try to take a lot of the responsibility off of Aaron's shoulders because he he also was you know he was juggling a bunch of other things and trying to create new stuff and you know so I, I was like I was like his right hand man so to speak and mm -hmm. um you know so w without me being there and I just imagine I don't know because I wasn't there but I could just imagine because I know I, I know how he works and I know like without having somebody like me there I know it was probably difficult for him to get through the season. Mm -hmm. you know um um and i mean and he's insanely br i mean this motherfucker is brilliant you know don't get it <laughs> don't get it twisted right like aaron is aaron is brilliant like i mean i learned a whole lot from him um but i know you know what i'm saying like it, it just it, it's I, without the right the right wing man i don't think you know he, he it would it would be difficult for him to get through it you know? i got you i got you yeah and yes it, he is a very um brilliant individual man and both of y'all yeah. and including rodney barnes man i thought like, yeah. if we talk about if, before we even get into like the actual cast members, I mean, just what you guys were bringing behind the scenes was just incredible. And of course, you know, as, as I saw recently, he's you know got something going on with Amazon, uh, like a alternate universe for what happens with Black America if they were to you know have things play out correctly in history. So, kind of looking forward to that. But on the flip side, yo, Carl Jones, man, I, I just gotta say again, man, it's just what you bring to the game and what you brought to the game, man. I just want to say we always appreciate it. Sin and I, we like we're big fans of your work. Period. You know what I'm saying? Period. And the fact that you know you you know been well versed in what's taking place with comedy, the animation, executive producing, your funny stories dealing with rappers directly, man. I'm just saying what you bring. Uh, you actually, you know, inspire a lot of people. And I'm telling you, homie, there's a lot of people that be like, yo, yeah, know about Carl Jones. And that's why we just want people, some of our listeners who may not be completely aware of you as a person to get you on the horn here and, you know, let you chop it up with us here. So, of course, man, yo, Carl Jones, how can the people like, you know, let's say find some more of your material uh, for that matter? And what do you uh, have in the works right now? Um... Well, I, I got um, uh, like, like I said, I'm, I'm doing this new show for Adult Swim called Laser Wolf. Um, we don't have a release date yet, but we're right, we're right in the middle of writing the scripts now. Mm -hmm. and then um, I produced another show for Adult Swim called Jellies um, with uh, Tyler the Creator. Um, so that that should be coming out pretty soon too. I, I don't know what the release dates are for either one of these shows. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah. Um, aside from that, man, you know, I'm always developing. Um, I uh, just did a, some animation on a show called A Kill the Fugitive Hunter for A&E. So, um, yeah, A&E, they, they canceled it. Um, and, and that's a, I don't, not, that's a long story, but they canceled it. But so the, the idea is to try to find another home for it. So I think um, they might be trying to hit up like BET or somebody like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, other than that, man, just developing, um, you know, got a couple of things i can't speak on too much right okay. now but I, I definitely keep you posted yo okay and one more thing man and this is like i said it's a dope thing about talking to you i, I got one question though you brought up 
the situation with Tyler the Creator and Jelly. So you have a hand mm-hmm. in that as well. Yes. Man, that that looks because yeah. that show looks like it's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I think it's pretty cool, man. Ty, Tyler is a genius, man. The dude is, I mean, he, I mean, him and Lionel, like, I mean, the whole their whole crew is amazing. But mm-hmm. Tyler is like a real visionary. Like, I mean, you know, having a chance to work with them and be in the writers' room with them, like, I mean, it's almost like I felt like I was in, like, like in the in the presence of like, uh, like the. <laughs> Like I, I mean, I wouldn't quite. I wouldn't. Now I wouldn't call. I wouldn't say he's Chappelle. Mm-hmm. But what I will say is this: I think he's he's got so much untapped potential in comedy that, and a lot of people just don't know how funny he is. But mm-hmm. he's really, he's really, really funny, man. I believe it because yeah. you know I saw some of his shorts uh, on like online, right? And I was like, oh, okay, that's what's up. Then I sat down and watched some of the shows, and I was like, yo, this dude is really funny. Like it's, yeah. it's funny, so you can tell. At some point, if it's like continued to be manifested and birthed properly, that you know he can go on to do big things. But yo, uh, Carl Jones, man, you're developing a very impressive resume when it comes to executive producing. It's like, it's like right now you like the Harriet Tubman for a lot of Negroes in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I've never heard that. Before. That's hysterical. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> but, but, yo, I just want to say, man, uh, this has been an honor and a pleasure. Appreciate you very much taking out the time in your busy schedule, homie. Oh, thank you, bro. And uh, I love the ludicrous and the, the Al Sharpton stories. You know, that's that's some classic stuff, man. You guys heard it here on Thought Crimes first. Of course, you know, uh, I am Prince Solomon, and this is Thought Crimes. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Mr. Carl Jones, uh, we appreciate you very much. Oh, man, thank you. I appreciate you too, brother. All right, peace. All right, peace. Go to our Patreon for more. And don't bother me. Peace.